In 1965, a stranger came to stay on this quite suburban street in a sleepy Cheshire town. He was an American folk singer who hardly anyone had heard of. The stranger's name was Paul Simon. That's right, the same Paul Simon who, in my opinion, has written some of the greatest songs of the past 50 years. And it's said that one of his biggest hits and most enduring songs was inspired right here in Widnes. Ben Bowden plays in a Simon and Garfunkel tribute group and is something of an expert on his hero. Ben told me that Paul came to Britain to live after Simon and Garfunkel's first album flopped. The group split and Paul Simon came to England. He then went off on a tour around Britain and came up here to witness. Was he just here for the gigs? No, I think he was writing as well and being a you know, the artist that he is, he was absorbing an awful lot of the local culture. And each town looks the same to me, the movies and the factories. In, every street in Witness, Paul stayed at the home of a man who booked him to appear at a local club. Jeff Speed now has a folk music show on BBC Radio Merseyside. So how did Paul end up staying with Jeff? That was the sort of thing that happened in folk clubs. You see, you booked him to sing and you would offer him accommodation. He would sit in this very room and look through the window and uh, he had an Oxford pad which he would uh, be writing songs. Jeff's folk club hadn't yet got a permanent base so he hired rooms as and when he could. Paul was paid £12 per gig and I've got the receipt here, they made him sign for his 12 quid and he paid four or five gigs and one of them was up there in the Windsor rooms. Paul played here on September the 13th, 1965. The support act that night was the Black Diamonds. Their singer was Chris Sherwin. Chris, can you paint me a picture of what this place looked like on the night? Yes. A homemade stage, wooden block stage, and we sang on it and then introduced Paul to the audience here. Is there a particular song that stood out for you that night? Yes, I think Sounds of Silence definitely was a winner because of the haunting tune and it was absolutely beautiful. How does it feel for you knowing that you've played on that same stage as such a legend? Well, it's a great story to tell the children and grandchildren. <laughs> the Windsor Rooms was where he played, but it's time spent at Widnes Station as he prepared to leave the town that's gone down in Paul Simon folklore. It's said that when he arrived at the railway station, he had quite a wait, so he decided to write a song. On a tour of one night stands, my suitcase and guitar in hand. And Homeward Bound is a quintessentially American sounding tune, but it's set in and inspired by the north of England. The plaque claims it was actually written on the platform here. Jeff Speed thinks differently. No, no. I dropped Paul off here just a few minutes before the train was due. We said our fond farewells and. Uh, as he walked through the door, the train came into the station. If he wrote it uh, during that period of time, he was a miracle worker. <laughs> <laughs> Paul himself is vague about where the song was written, as he said when he appeared on Going Live in 1990. I played in clubs in Widnes and in Warrington and in Liverpool, and it was on that trip that I uh, wrote, the, uh, wrote the song Homeward Bound, about coming back to London where I lived. And I think that's why they put the plaque up there. Paul was soon homeward bound to New York. In January 1966, the sound of silence hit the top of the American charts and he returned home to reform Simon and Garfunkel. Paul Simon has never forgotten his time here. One thing's clear from my chats today and that is he was a dedicated musician and that helped him to become one of popular music's greatest ever songwriters. And how brilliant that little old Witness had a part to play on that journey. My love lies silently.